this has a main cables in here and I'm really worried I'm gonna touch them by accident. <laughs> Hey guys, if you follow my articles about my DIY smart heating, you know it brings a joy to my life with all the fancy features like multi-room temperature control and so on. And recently I bought 90 RVs to introduce individual radiator controls to add it to the mix. But there is a one thing I really should address. My thermostat. It is unique. It's 100% functional and 100% frightening. It greets everyone at the door and I'm not surprised if the guests either question me or ready to dial a bomb squad because, well, it does look unique. However, it's 100% working and over the last four years it let me down once with a four hour downtime. This is actually better than Google Nest in terms of uh, cloud access. If you don't believe me, go and check it out. But this abomination has to go. It's a mix between my 30-year-old Honeywell analog thermostat and Son of Basic R2. Now, I have a Zigbee-based thermostat that I'm testing, and this is the unit in here. I've ended up with this one because I wanted a Zigbee thermostat, and so oh, let's face it, the choice wasn't that great. And don't go online just looking for this, because apart from the AliExpress listing, you're not going to see anything else in regards to this thermostat, so you'll have to rely on my impressions. Apart from Zigbee, I was swayed by the icons with those little houses and numbers inside, thinking those are probably zone controls. Boy, was I wrong. But there is another strong argument in favor of this thermostat. Just look at the three different versions available. The one I've got uh, uses exactly the same relay type as the son of R2 Basic supplying mains to my signal line to turn on the heating. But if your setup is different, you have two other versions of this thermostat to use. There is one which directly sends up to 16 amps of load to a heating source. It could be a floor heating or just a heater. Another one uses dry contact relay allowing you to send a DC or AC low voltage signal to fire up your boiler or whatever you're using to heat up your apartment. It's great because, well, everyone can enjoy a Zigbee thermostat on a wall. So what is it like up close? Actually not that bad. I was very familiar with this layout thanks to the TRVs I got from Moe's. In fact, they also come with a four button control scheme which is present on this unit. I was actually pleasantly surprised that this is an LCD display with a touchscreen overlay. Unfortunately, the touchscreen overlay is limited to four buttons at the bottom and you cannot interact with the entire screen, which is slightly disappointing. And another disappointing thing is that uh, the button M and the volume down can be triggered by clicking <laughs> actually on the black board around it. It's only those two buttons and for the most part, I'm not that bothered. I mean, let's face it, this is around 25 pounds, so I'd consider it a budget unit. For what I'm getting for that money, it's hard to complain. The unit is 87 millimeters wide and should conform the so socket or the cubby, which is 50 millimeters wide. So if this is your setup, then go for it. If you flip the unit around, you'll also notice that it has a terminal for external temperature sensor. It's very useful if you're using floor heating and you could use that to control that as well. I will be relying on the built-in sensor, which is located at the bottom. And since the device doesn't give out much heat, I don't think this will be skewed. If anything is gonna go wrong, I still have my self-developed auto calibration um, script that I can use with this thermostat as well. If you're interested in that, go check it out. I've made a self-calibration uh, script for the TRVs, which are placed next to the radiator, where something like this is quite important. But before I'm gonna get this connected, let's take it apart and see what's inside. It is module and you can pop the front panel easily. Inside you'll find a daughter board with ZS3L module. Uh, I mean, all the pins are broken out if you want to tinker with it, but it's Zigbee, so why would you? It's just gonna connect to your coordinator anyway. 
For a cheap device like this, you get a pretty decent instructions that explain everything. Everything apart, pairing. There is no information on how to put this device in a pairing mode and it took me about 45 minutes to get this figure out. I've used a combination of YouTube and some information online and trial and error to figure out that to pair this unit what you have to do is turn it off with the middle button and then hold the arrow down to enter pairing mode. Hold it for about five to six seconds and you'll be able to pair it either with a TUI ecosystem using Zigbee Bridge or with your custom coordinator. So the first uh, ecosystem of choice was obviously TUI just to see what options I have an access to and what I can do with it. And it turns out it works just like the TRVs units that I've hooked up with TUI as well. Now you'll have an access to pre-programmable modes, including uh, manual, echo, and the one based on timers. You'll have a delay up to 24 hours, and you will have access to play about in the app. So you can set the temperature and everything's gonna be obviously out updated on the unit within seconds. Since it's Tuya, you'll also have an access to integrations with Google Home and Alexa, so you won't be stranded if you want to use voice controls. Nice. In the options, we'll find uh, extra settings in regards to the locking and unlocking this device, the child lock, settings uh, with ability to control minimum and maximum set point. It's excellent for anyone that has, uh, well, family members that either want to run the thermostat way too high or way too low, and uh, scheduling. This is where I discovered that those tiny little home icons with numbers one to six aren't zones. Unfortunately, they are time periods. So as the device progresses through the day, it will display different time periods and different um, home icons will appear. I'm disappointed about it because I really wanted this to be zoned so I could um, display on the thermostat which room is taking priority in my home heating system. Extra settings include ability to change the unit from Celsius to Imperial, if you're into that, and uh, the fact that you can offset the built-in temperature sensor just in case your thermostat is placed near the source of heat. But I didn't get it for two years, so let's uh, unpair it and pair it my, with my custom coordinator. I'm using Electrolama right now and the latest Zigbee to MQTT. You can watch uh, a little bit more about Electrolama in this video in the corner. So it pairs without any problems, providing you already know the pairing instructions. But there is a catch. By default, it is identified as a different thermostat, the one from Mohs. And to be honest, if you're looking at the listing from AliExpress, they look alike. And if I knew that would be the case, I probably would have uh, opt out for the AliExpress version of Mohs since it's already supported. But the thermostat pairs and delivers a payload. It's clear from the log that some of the data points are missing, but opening Node-RED and playing about shows that only a couple of settings are missing. For the most part, everything works and behaves like with TRVs, and you'll have the ability to turn it on and off again, set the set points, etc. What's missing is the information about the periods that are being set for the device, and a couple of options including echo mode and lower set point limit. I've played about with converters from TRVs from Mohs and the thermostat from Mohs, but I was not able to come up with a solution that worked. So I've gathered all the data points from Tuya Cloud and submitted a GitHub request to add device to a supported device list. It's slightly above my pay grade, but if I'm gonna have enough time, I might do it myself. The device works in exactly the same way as the TRVs from most, so all I have to do is submit a JSON formatted payload to the device and set it to a set um, MQTT topic, and that way you'll be able to change individual settings. One of the annoying things is that uh, even though you're submitting them remotely, the device will still make a beep and I'm probably gonna end up disconnecting that beeping element on the PCB. Because I'm using a different coordinator, the temperature isn't recording correctly either and you have to multiply the value by 10. And speaking of temperature, when I was uh, testing the temperature of the, uh, coming from the internal sensor versus the uh, third party sensors, they were pretty much spot on, even though the uh, resolution of this thermostat is only 0.5 degree. In my article, I'll list all the parameters and the values that I've discovered. So if you want to give a go, 
then just add to the description and you'll find a list of things I've discovered. Obviously, as time goes on, I'll be updating this. It's easier to update the article than the video, so if there is something missing in this video you want to try, check the article first to see if there are any updates. In that article, I will also include the sample flow that you've seen on the screen, in case you just want to play about and see what's what. This thermostat's gonna end up on my wall pretty soon. I still have to get someone to install extra valves for me because my TRVs aren't compatible with radiators, so I'm gonna put all of them together and start working on version 4.0 of my heating system. So if this is something you are really interested and you would like to follow, well, you know how YouTube works. Unfortunately, I do not have a, any schedule for that, so you'll have to keep your eyes peeled. But if you have interesting information about all the Zigbee uh, thermostats, do let me know, especially via social media, because YouTube likes to filter out comments with links. As for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Do let me know if you've got any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.